ships were used to bring stones from the river as close to the construction site as possible. This particular block has the same density as limestone, so it's nearly 3 grams per cc. So it's, it's a realistic flotation. And then he would be offloaded using a counterbalancing weight here. We'd have the man on there like that. So and then it would be swung away and lifted onto the quayside. After which the block would be hauled by a team of men up to the foot of the lift. Once we got to the bottom, here the model employs a stepped ramp because this kind of ramp allows the minimum amount of material and it gives you the maximum height because you can go up in greater increments. And here we use A-frame cages with men inside whose numbers balance the weight, more or less balance the weight of the block. Um, they don't exactly balance it because by that means men could pull on the, on the ropes and lift the block at a controlled rate and switch it from the base onto the next level. The block then rolls to the next lifting stage and the process is repeated until you eventually get to the top of the construction stage. Now this particular pyramid is a small one but it's about a third complete and this is the optimum level because in this particular at this particular stage about 80% of the blocks are in the bottom third. Uh, I've not shown how the blocks are going to be raised to the, the upper reaches, that will follow. The blocks were hauled by teams of men to the foot of the ramp and they had these curved little sleds, four of which, or in sets of four, were wrapped round the block so it converted a square or oblong block into a circular object that could be rolled easily. Once the block was transported to the foot of the step ramp, it was raised by means of these A-frames which had counterbalancing men inside them. The A-frame itself is a simple, efficient device that allows fairly compact um, volume of space, it gives a dynamic envelope that's easy to move, it gives some protection to the men when it's being moved so none of them are hanging out and can be hurt uh, and it allows the blocks to be raised efficiently without needing too much of a drop. This process was repeated until the block reached the top of the construction level. Um, this pyramid is a, is a small one and only shows construction to this stage. In a later model, I'll demonstrate how the blocks were raised to the higher levels, including the pyramidion. Here we have an apex block, or a set of them, that were used to bridge corridors or some chambers, and they were lowered in position by means of uh, sand. Sand was let out into a lower chamber and the blocks were allowed to come together to form the final structure. Now I'm going to go on to the transport of the main block. The larger blocks which represent stones weighing 80 to 100 tonnes, of which are quite a number of them, thousands in fact, in the lower stages of the Great Pyramid, uh, these were moved on a, on a slight incline, probably no more than 2 or 3, two or three percent incline and they're transported, I've shown them on rollers. Now these look like sleds, but they're not. They're actually roller guides, because this system allows the more efficient use of the wood. The rollers don't need to be any wider than the stone. Um, they allow the stone to travel to its final destination. Uh, and as you can see, the men are hauling the block from the rear rather than from the side or the front and this is to keep the forces parallel with the direction of travel. By this means the men are out of the reach of the rollers, they don't get in the way and they're out of the reach of, of the final resting place for the rock which would have been a lubricated patch of, of stone. Uh, by this means the blocks move along the rollers and the rollers recede behind them and remain equally spaced. 
Using this technique, you need more roller sets, but against that, you don't have to reposition any of the rollers or move the sleds. You start with a fresh sled and set of rollers at the beginning, and you finish with a spare set, which you then transport that one back to the beginning. So it's a fairly efficient system and economical on the use of wood. Finally, when the block gets to, to the end, it has to be dropped possibly as much as 20 or 50 centimetres from the rollers onto the ground. Now, this would normally be a risky operation. They would have had to have done it using wedges. So the block would be lowered, as you can see on the video, into position without chipping the end. It would, they would have had to have made sure that the block came to rest on a patch of rock that was already pre-lubricated so that when the roller sleds had been removed, the men could push it into, into its final position. Uh, I think a very efficient lubricant would have been needed for this, and I'll talk about this later. Uh, they certainly would have needed something that substantially, i.e. more than 95%, reduced the friction so that they could push the final stone into position with a, a reasonable degree of control and without too much um, effort. This project is based on a, a number of simple features. Firstly, the Egyptians were a river people who transported many things by water. And when it comes to transporting heavy objects like a stone, ships will do this easily. But the, the stone has to be positioned exactly in the middle of the ship and equidistant from the side, otherwise it topples over. Because the ship not only floats, it's balanced. And therefore, to load and unload this, they had to have a mechanism for lifting the stone off the quay, placing it on the ship, and conversely, lifting it off the ship and placing it on the quay. Especially since they were transporting thousands of blocks by this means. So they, they, they had that. They also had the shadoof, which was a counterbalanced weight that, was, that lifted water from the river 